Hey guys, welcome to Woodwork Life. Today, we're gonna build this awesome air tool cabinet with a built-in silencer. Now, full disclosure, I had a lot of corrupted files when I was making this video, so uh, it's gonna be a little choppy in some places, but bear with me. And for bearing with me, I am including free plans of this project on my website, so check those out at woodworklife.com. Let's get into the project, though. This is an overview of what we're building. It's a two foot deep by three foot seven inch tall cabinet. So the cut list breaks down like this. You'll need two two foot by 30, three foot seven inch long pieces. And before you assemble this, you'll want to cut them down with this one foot and four inch curve or taper, however you want to break up that monolithic cabinet. So you'll need two of those pieces that are matched along with three two foot by one foot 10 inch pieces that are going to function as the top, the bottom of the drawer, and a four inch space to this top of the drawer. The bottom of the cabinet is another one foot four inch by one foot ten inch piece. And you can see how this kind of comes together. This is going to be the, so the assembly for where the compressor is going to sit. This is the slot for the drawer. And then this is going to be where the air tools, air tools are stored at a little bit lower points so that are easier to grab. While I cut the dados to assemble this cabinet, I want to thank the sponsors of this video, the Home Depot and Makita. Home Depot has been a longtime supporter of this channel and this community, and they provided the two and a half horsepower quiet compressor that inspired this build. If you want to pick one up, I've linked to it from Home Depot's website at the top link in the description. Now back to the build. After completing the cut list, again, that you can find for free at the link in the description and cutting the dados, we can cut those curves. I just freehanded these, but you could also use a drawing bow if you wanted a more consistent curve. I'll link to a video on how to build one of those. With the curves traced, I cut them out with the jigsaw and used the first cut as a template to cut the second one before ganging them together to sand them flush. With the curves and dados cut on the side panels, it was time to assemble the carcass of the cabinet. With paint grade plywood like this, you should overcut your dados just a bit. But I got cocky and cut them way too tight, so I had a bear of a time gluing this thing together. A snug dado can easily be done, but would require more expensive cabinet grade plywood to ensure that it's more dimensionally stable and flat. I overcame my tight dados by sanding a very slight taper into the edges of the plywood and pinning the pieces in place before driving screws to lock everything together. I don't know how much of that assembly I'm gonna be able to use in the final edit. There was a lot of cussing and frustration, but we're done now. Uh, at least the carcass is put together. Uh, now I need to build a drawer to put inside here. I, I might try to work upside down, we'll see. And then I also need to build a door uh, to put on here, put in all the uh, sound insulation material, uh, as well as just kind of buttoning the whole thing up and sanding it all uh, to make, get it ready to go. Uh, and then after that, I'm gonna put in the dividers so I have the separate tool compartments down here. Hopefully it'll turn out into something cool. First, I chose to install the door. I wanted to fit snug and be inset to the frameless cabinet, so I cut the door 1 8 of an inch smaller than the opening in both dimensions, so it would have a 1 16th inch reveal all around. This would make sure that minimal sound could get through the door when closed. I measured and cut this after assembly in case there was any error or slop in the cabinet construction I needed to account for. I installed the cabinet doors using frameless Euro hinges, to these doors because I wanted the door to sit flush to the front of the cabinet. When you're buying Euro hinges in bulk, they often omit the multi-way adjustment features. And I don't know about you, but no matter how carefully I install inset doors, I always need a little bit of adjustment to get them to fit just perfectly. So don't buy them in bulk unless you make sure they still have the three-way adjustment features. To keep everything square and to ensure that little air and thus sound escape from the back of the cabinet, I installed a quarter inch backer to the cabinet. I used two pieces of scrapped hardboard that I had laying around. Be sure to pre-drill hardboard because although it's thin, it's still MDF and it'll still mushroom and split on you if you don't pre-drill it first. I then glued and screwed the French cleat I would use to install this thing onto the wall. 
There are a lot of different things you could use to soundproof this cabinet, but I used AeroZoom sound panels. They're very affordable and work very well in this application, and I didn't even have to cut them. I'll include the link to where I bought these at the link in the description. You can use my code AZ-WWL for 10% off your order. The acoustic foam is really simple to install using a can of spray adhesive, and it really makes a big difference on how much sound escapes the cabinet. At this point with the cabinet mostly assembled, I decided it was time to take down the old air station and install this thing on the wall. If you have a shop helper, this would be a great time to call them in because lifting almost a whole sheet of plywood above your head isn't exactly easy. I measured for the height of the cabinet to ensure it wouldn't interfere with the outlet underneath it and installed the French cleat into two studs using three, two three inch screws per stud. With the cabinet now installed on the wall, I assembled the drawer. This is literally the weakest drawer assembly you could possibly build, and I'm gonna load this thing down with 20 pounds of nails and air tool components, and I'm not even a little worried about it. I clamped together half inch MDF with pin nails to keep the pieces aligned while the glue dried, and then reinforced this even more by gluing and pinning on the bottom panel. This isn't optimal drawer assembly, but for shop furniture that will hold less than 50 pounds, it's usually more than adequate. The glue typically dries stronger than the material itself anyway. Installing the new cabinet, I also took the opportunity to upgrade, hopefully, my hose reel. The spring has failed on the auto rewind feature on my last two hose reels, so I invested in what is hopefully a little nicer one. Has anyone had any luck with any brands of auto rewind hose reels over a long period of time, or are they just destined to break? The only place that air really escapes this cabinet is through a couple little holes I had to drill for the power cord and the hose to pass through. I drilled a few holes into the back of the bottom of the cabinet to intake air from behind the drawer so the drawer would function as sort of a baffle for the sound while still allowing plenty of air through. Next, it was time to get this drawer fitted. Full extension bearing drawer slides are typically half inch thick each, so you'll want to make your drawer one inch narrower than the opening. I used a spacer block to mark the center point of the drawer slides onto the inside of the opening and installed the drawer centered vertically into the opening. After installing the drawer, I installed the face. Again, I cut the drawer face 1 8 inch smaller in each dimension than the opening to allow for a 1 16 inch reveal on all sides. Handy tip, a drywall saw makes a perfect 1 16 inch spacer. Hmm. I didn't make the cavity underneath the full height of my framing nailer, so I needed to cut out a pretty big notch out of the bottom of the cabinet to accommodate the magazine. I got some notches for my other nailers as well, mainly so they could be stored upright for easy retrieval. The dividers between the nailer aren't the full depth of the cabinet, and this was done intentionally so you could clean out the cabinet with just a little bit of compressed air so the sawdust wouldn't get stuck in one compartment or another. Just an easier way to keep it clean. So I had a really good time building this project and I'm happy that I finally took the time to build something more permanent instead of that shelf and whatever I slapped together when I first moved into the shop. Let me walk you through a couple of the key features here. So it's got a built-in silenced cabinet that's got sound absorbing foam all around where the compressor is. Now, if you're gonna use this compressor for heavy duty cycles like spraying paint or you know air sanding or things like that, you wouldn't wanna use a silencer like this because it would interfere with the cooling of the compressor. But since I'm just using it for light duty for nailers and 
you know, the odd spray off of some things, it's gonna work out just fine. I'm also really happy that I incorporated a drawer that I could use to store all my pneumatic nails and all of my kind of odds and ends uh, air tool accessories. I use some uh, bins that were left over from some uh, Husky tool bins that I had bought that uh, I didn't end up using to organize. I actually ended up using them as like foam tool holders. So they make some nice organizers for the drawer and actually kind of built them around that. Uh, if you want, you could uh, 3D print those or just buy some plastic tool organizers on Amazon. I'll throw a link down below. I, I used uh, 3 quarter inch MDF as the separators for the different nailers. Uh, that was just so that I could use uh, glue, uh, super glue to connect the top end since I wouldn't easily be able to drive a screw or a nail. Of course, I could have taken out the drawer and done that with a 90 degree a uh, 90 degree angle adjuster, but I wanted these shelves to be easily removable and changeable if I ever wanted to add more nailers or change out what kind of tools I was holding in there, if I wanted to change anything about the setup. So that's kind of a walkthrough on the cabinet. Thanks for watching today. I really appreciate you guys joining in. Remember, there's free plans on woodworklife.com. I'll throw a link down there in the description. I wanna thank Home Depot and Makita, the sponsor of this build today. And uh, remember, keep your tools sharp, and keep your mind sharper.